The ice stretches endlessly in every direction, white above, white below. The wind howls at 60 miles an hour, driving the temperature down past minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. A human exposed here would freeze solid in minutes. Yet somewhere in this frozen void, a hunter kneels motionless beside a hole no wider than his fist, waiting. He has been there for three hours. He will wait three more if necessary, because in the Arctic, survival isn't won by strength or speed. It's won by patience, precision, and the kind of intelligence that turns ice itself into a weapon. The Inuit people lived north of the tree line for thousands of years in a landscape that offered almost nothing. No wood for building, no metal, no rope, just snow, stone, bone, and the animals they hunted. Every tool they made, every trap they set, had to be carved from this frozen world. And because one failed hunt could mean starvation, every trap had to work flawlessly in conditions cold enough to shatter steel. Consider the stone fox trap called the pullet. It was a chamber built entirely from rocks, with a narrow entrance just wide enough for a fox to squeeze through. Inside, at the back wall, a piece of bait hung from a leather cord. But the genius wasn't in the bait. It was in what held the door open. A hunter would balance a small pebble on top of an upright caribou leg bone. The bone stood near the entrance, connected by sinew to both the bait and a heavy stone slab propped above the doorway. When the fox tugged the bait, the cord pulled the bone. The pebble rolled, the bone toppled, and in an instant, the stone door crashed down, sealing the fox inside a chamber it couldn't turn around in or break through. The trap was engineered with brutal simplicity. It had to be sensitive enough to trigger from a single tug yet stable enough not to collapse from the wind. The solution was elegant. The bone was strong under vertical pressure, but catastrophically unstable when pulled sideways. The fox's own hunger became the trigger. And because the mechanism used only stone, bone, and sinew, it functioned perfectly at 50 degrees below zero, where metal springs would freeze and snap. However, some traps didn't rely on doors at all. The Uplisot was a cone of stones built to look like a natural mound on the tundra. It was hollow inside and concealed a deep pit in its center. Bait hung just under the rim, where a fox climbing the outer rocks could smell it. But the rim was unstable, with loose stones or a thin layer of snow designed to collapse under weight. The moment the fox leaned in, the covering gave way, and it plunged into the pit, where walls coated with poured ice offered no grip for claws. The fox was trapped in a stone well with no way out. Hunters checked these traps periodically, finding animals that had exhausted themselves trying to climb slick, inward slanting walls. But for larger predators, the Inuit invented something even more unsettling. They took a strip of sharpened whale baleen, coiled it tight, and encased it in a lump of frozen animal fat. The trap was left on the sea ice where wolves or polar bears prowled. A hungry predator would swallow the frozen chunk whole. and inside its warm stomach, the fat melted. The baleen sprang open like a blade, and the animal's own body heat triggered the mechanism that killed it from within. Hunters tracked the predator and claimed the carcass hours later. The freeze itself had become a timer, 
and the predator's appetite the fuse, but the most demanding technique required no trap at all. Only a harpoon, a breathing hole, and inhuman patience. Ringed seals live under the sea ice in winter, surfacing only at tiny openings they maintain by grinding the ice with their claws. These breathing holes, called aglu, are scattered across miles of frozen ocean. A hunter had to find an active one by looking for subtle signs. A fresh opening without refrozen film, a faint depression in the snow. Then he positioned himself downwind so his scent wouldn't carry, avoided casting a shadow, and waited. Three hours or four, sometimes longer. The cold seeped through fur and skin. Fingers went numb, but he couldn't move, couldn't shift weight, and couldn't make a sound. Because when the seal finally surfaced, he would have less than a second to react. A faint exhale, a soft scratching sound. Then the harpoon thrusts down through the hole, its toggling head designed to turn sideways under the skin and anchor the line. The seal would dive, thrashing against the cord, but the hunter held firm. Eventually, the seal got hauled through the widened hole after it had gotten weakened and was unable to stay submerged. Something interesting about this was that Inuit elders said they learned this patience by watching polar bears. A bear will lie motionless beside a breathing hole for hours, waiting for the rare moment to strike. The Inuit studied the bear's stillness, its absolute commitment to the weight, and applied the same discipline. In the Arctic, the greatest predator wasn't the one with the sharpest claws. It was the one who could outweigh its prey. Every trap, every technique, reflected the same principle. Intelligence over force. Observation over technology. The Inuit mastered the Arctic by learning its rhythms, studying its creatures, and designing tools that worked in harmony with the cold rather than against it. A stone trap built correctly would last for decades, catching foxes long after the hunter who set it had died. The knowledge passed from grandfather to grandson during brief winter daylight, each generation refining the balance of pebble on bone, the slope of icy walls, the patience required to kneel beside a hole in the ice. In a place where survival hung on razor-thin margins, the Inuit proved that the sharpest tool humanity possesses isn't made of metal or fire. It's the ability to watch, to learn, and to wait.
You see the way that last one circled in the drift? Thought he'd get past us. Hmm, not with you watching. Quick hands today. Lucky. Sun helped, though. Tracks lit up like fire. We'll eat well tonight. 